Welcome to our fourth lecture on speech prosody, and in this lecture we'll be discussing pitch production and how that's constructed in the human vocal tract. So let's begin here with a picture of a human head um, in a sagittal view. So we can see the articulators in the vocal tract, um, including the lips and the tongue, which essentially is a large muscle and the configuration of the lips and the tongue, and for example, the velum, contribute to determining the configuration of the articulators that distinguish the vowels and consonants in the language that's being spoken. However, to make actual sound come out of our mouths, we need to produce air from the lungs that comes out and passes through the neck and then out through this articulatory configuration. That's not a trivial path because it also has to pass through the trachea and also the larynx before reaching the upper portion of the vocal tract. Now we can take a closer look at the larynx, which is where speech voicing and also pitch production occur. So the larynx itself is a configuration of several cartilaginous components, and those pieces of cartilage are attached to muscles and ligaments that control their configuration, and subtle changes in the tension and angle of those ligaments and muscles changes speech production and pitch production. However, what we're looking at is essentially sort of the outer hard components of the larynx here, but the really interesting portion of what's going on from the point of view of pitch production is happening actually on the inside of this process. So we can take a different view to get a better idea of what's happening. So we've now rotated and are looking essentially down that column in this image, and we can point to the glottis here Generally, the combination of the vocal folds and the opening between them constitutes the glottis. This image labels that area as the trachea because that's what's visible through the opening in the vocal folds when you're looking down at this angle. So the vocal folds show up here in yellow. They're actually more extensive and go off to the side, but they are here partially occluded by the ventricular folds, which are also referred to as the false vocal folds, but those only get used or produce sound in the context of something like growling or gargling. Most of the speech function is carried by the vocal folds. So we can take a closer look at the configuration of the glottis. So we can begin on the left-hand side, similar to the previous view, we see an open glottis here with the vocal folds spread and a clear view down toward the trachea. And in this case, air passes relatively unobstructedly in and out of the lungs, and that's kind of the state we're in when we're breathing quietly. Vocal folds can also be closed, and that's typically the state when we swallow or when we lift something heavy. And finally, on the far right, we see the configuration you get with voiced speech, where the vocal folds are opening and closing, typically rapidly, as we talk. And we can see a naturally occurring form of the vocal fold vibration in an image here. So this image is taken from an endoscopic view where a camera has been threaded through the nasal passages and then down into the throat so that you can get this top-down view of the vocal folds and the glottis. And we can actually play this image, this video back and see what's happening right now. So there you can see the vocal folds waving open and closed 
as air is comes up from the lungs while this in this case child is saying the sound ah now this is a stroboscopic recording so what we see is a slowed down version of what's actually quite rapidly opening and closing um, of the vocal folds as since this speaker probably has a pitch around 200 hertz so the vocal folds are actually moving very very rapidly but we can see them much more clearly in this view and so that's the process whereby air comes from the lungs the pressure from that air pushes the vocal fold to open and closed based on the configuration of the muscles and ligaments around the larynx to produce the pitch that we hear. And we can return to our slides just to wrap up. So now that you've seen how pitch production works, in the next lecture we'll talk about how we can use signal processing techniques to compute the fundamental frequency and capture the pitch acoustics and in a later lecture, we'll look at how humans actually perceive pitch. Thank you.